Alright party peoples, I'm going to show you how you rip apart an FP washing machine to get your desired gear. Now first of all you start with the top of the washing machine um, and what you'll notice is that's basically the guts of one. It's been like that. Um, now when you open it up, of course you open the lid up, you can actually grab hold underneath the lid here and pull it outwards and get this one up a little bit and then it'll just pop straight off and that'll get your whole lid off. Now you have these little rubber grommets that sit in there reasonably neat and you just start pulling them from the side like that, bang, get the screws out. Now you get to the back and you get these screws out and every other stinking screw you can see just take it out and this lot should come up like this. Now with a bit of wiggling and jiggling that'll come right out. Uh, and there you get to basically this brown box here. Um, you can basically wiggle and jiggle uh, with this and basically get any more screws out that you can see. Um, and then pull all the plugs out. And most of them just slip out that way and then you'll get all this out. But that's actually will be enclosed with the two halves like that and there'll be a circuit board in there, but that doesn't mean a crap. Um, but at the end of the day, um, there's another little thing you've got to play with here, a little tab that hangs out, and you've got to fiddle with that, and a whole lot of this will, will come off. Now, there's more little tabs on this thing that... Where do we go here? Bugger if I can remember. But there's basically... I think they sit over here. Uh, I can't really remember, but there's other little tabs um, that basically... Oh, yes. I think they're on your mate. Yeah. you got to pull that ring I showed up and off of these. And that's your main big tub uh, that all your water gets into. Now, when you do that, uh, just throw that to one side, it'll be hanging off the spring, but you'll notice that everything is mounted off of these. There's one of these in each corner. Now, this is basically a shock absorber. There's springs in that. Um, you know, and this Hergler Magoog will be mounted up here through them holes or some crap. Um, but yeah, basically the whole assembly here, those springy bits that sort are of sit in here, is just dangling. Um, now, you'll have your hoogla magoog like this. Now, there's a little bit here where you've put up to put your fabric softener in and all that. You've got to get your hand right down into this, and there'll be this little turkey here, a wing nut. So just spin him out, normal way, like you're just opening a tap, anti clockwise, um, and he'll pop off. And then you've got to give this a bit of a wrestle and not too hard left to right but just sort of wiggle it, work it around and lift him up and he'll come off um, then gets a bit scratchy from here, I can't really remember but I think you basically keep playing with this um, oh no no no, hang on, you got this little green hoogla magoog uh, once you get him off there's this little bugger. Now this one here will have Phillips head screws and you'll need a cordless drill to get him out and he will sit like that. Now these screws will be so chog full of shit it won't be funny. Uh, so you may need to pick them out with a, a pen or something like that just to, you know, just to get the muck out of them and get them off. Um, and they may be... <laughs> Let's put it like this, you want to use a good screwdriver and plenty of pressure or a good screwdriver bit for drill and plenty of pressure uh, because they basically look a bit dirty and they can start jumping and if you strip that out whew, you're going to be in for real trouble. I'll tell you how you do get past it though. If you strip out a Phillips head screw, little known fact, an old stunt by Link, um, you get side cutters used for cutting wires and electronics and you basically grab either side of the head. Now, there's your head. Now, you come in from above with your side cutters like that, 
and grab them and then turn it and then you know just keep trying to spin your side cutters you may need to open them up and go back for a second chomp again once your wrist gets too far spun around or just try and you know turn it with one hand and one you spin your wrist a fair way grab it with this your other hand and, and keep going um, that's a way to get those out if all hell breaks loose and you basically lose it but have a good go at cleaning those screws and that little green thing before you get it out and when you get him out then you should be able to just lift this whole thing out now she'll be a bit of a struggle there mightn't be much room for your hand but you can lift him out for some reason there's still water caught on the insides of this I think it's in the base and still gurgling I can't work out what's going on um, now you will also need to remove the stupid little water pump thingy um, now you'll see him sitting on the back pretty much like that now you'll have your big it'll look like this like that all right and then this little turkey will be here now there's a number of big bolts um, not those ones but pretty much that size they might be like three eighths or something like that uh, actually I've got yeah ones like that now three of them are easy to get to there's one that's a bit of a pain in the ass because that little that's your, your drain motor that is actually part of it's hanging out I think it's there's one that is near your earth pin there uh, that's like right underneath like where my middle finger is um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass but you know these have got like a, a proper spanner head top on them so you can get them out with like a little spanner or whatever um, but the three should be easy to get to one two three and this one will be a pain in the ass um, but yeah you pull him out um, and there should be another one of those inside as well and oh yeah here we go oh, yeah. it'll basically be like that and you'll have one there and this is all somebody's yeah, a lot of shit build up anyway um, you undo that screw there and this will be inside um, not on the side where you see the fan on the little pump motor and all that uh, and you undo him and you pull him up and there might be a bit of o-ring and a bit of muck there's the other bit for it and there's a little o-ring um, but yeah that'll come out then you left with something that looks like this and this is the point where you got this giant big shaft like this that you can only see to a about that point um, inside all you can see is basically from your fingers down to the end there um, inside your tub and you'll have this hoogla magoog and you'll be able to see all of this whole circus under there but you won't know how to get to it and you'll be thinking what the hell do I do now this is where the backshed.com www thebackshed.com make sure you put the three W's otherwise you get thrown into some login bloody site for the developer I think but um, www.thebackshed.com uh, very good Aussie site uh, featuring a lot of stuff worth knowing for off gridding uh, anyway thanks to them I found out what to do next because I was stuffed I couldn't work out what to do um, I found on the inside of this shaft here there's like a little rubber seal and there was like a little uh, spring very fine spring over that rubber seal and I pulled that off and really I didn't know what to do next so here's what we done you gotta get this one here now this all looks like one piece doesn't it it's not this is all your magnets this is separate Turn him, not clockwise, but anti-clockwise like you're undoing it. And you'll see, maybe, if I stop shaking the bloody thing, you get the idea. And that will undo on that shaft. Now this is the shaft where, that's actually hidden up inside all this. Um, and those cog things you see, the larger ones, those are sitting on this one. 
Um, now basically, once you undo that, just go slowly and easy with it. Don't wrestle the sod because you'll wreck things. Um, but just slowly undo him and just slowly lift and, and you'll notice it's sort of coming up with you as you're turning it uh, and then that comes off and bang. That's all your magnets. Now this one is a 2003 build, um, 60 series. <laughs> 60 series you will not find written on the back on that thing or anything like that. There's a nickname that these people who make windmills out of these are made. 60 series means it uh, uses 0.6 mil wire in the windings. There's 80 series, which is 0.8 mil wire. 100 series, which is 1 mil wire, but they're rather rare. Um, so, yeah, this one's built in 2003. This is a 14 magnet one, but I think there's actually four magnets in each of these. 14 magnets. And so that'll be your piece that's come off. And then... you'll be looking at something like that with a shaft through it. Then you'll have the... I see your four bolt holes there. I can't really do this with unseen hands. Uh, but you've got your four bolt holes there on the top on your little silver ring. You need a 10 mil socket or three eights will probably work um, to get those out. Now, unfortunately, they didn't tell me this, but there's another one of those rings on the underside and mine fell in the dirt because they didn't tell me anything on the website so it's something you want to notice um, that there's gonna be another one uh, that may fall in the dirt um, and that's him there and you may have to wash the blooming not wash, wipe the leaves off it and stuff like that now when you get to that point um, basically you got most of the guts of it out you will be left with seeing something which is just like that basically and what you got to do then is undo that nut now you need a, a proper spanner big bitch spanner um, and you also need what we call multi grips vice grips whatever uh, these are multi grips I'm sure you know what these are. They're the one with the adjustable thing on that side where you got to click it up and it can sort of slide down to the next one. Um, and they recommend using brass or copper. Forget it. What you do, old handy dandy cardboard, and you wrap the cardboard around this piece here. The piece that your plastic bit was clicked into, you wrap your cardboard around that piece. And then your multi grips over your cardboard on that because you do not want to damage that. And then, in the same instance, you got to turn this with a spanner. So you got to hold this and have the spanner over that and turn it out. Now they said it'll be real hard, and mine just went poof and just went off with such minimum effort it wasn't funny. Um, but usually it's rather hard effort. And then you got to really be ready for this. And they don't tell you to be ready for this. But the son of a bitch tries to fall down backwards. So if you've got her upside down like I have, you just about, as soon as you start to loosen that off, believe me, lay it on the side. Like get this whole tub. And instead of having it upright, lay it flat on the ground. And then finish winding that off with your fingers. And this whole assembly will pull this way or if you've got it laying on the side that way but it basically pull you pull the whole shaft back through your bowl not up through the top just back through your bowl um, so yeah and that's how you disassemble it and apparently you're supposed to use a something with a name I forget um, to get the bearings out and there's another big loose dangling lemon bush in there by the looks and then there's another bearing on the inner side, uh, which I assume is one of those waterproof ones. Um, it's not a bad bearing either. SKF, made in France. Uh, I, I recognise the brand SKF from a mile off. Um, but apparently you're supposed to keep all them bearings and stuff. Um, 
I might just get a chainsaw under the tub and just keep the bearings out. I probably won't. I probably just ask my father how to get them out gently because he's an expert on dealing with bearings and I'm blasted clueless and he's very good with bearings um, and, and installing them and taking them out no matter how tight they are. Um, so yeah, that's how you get the little machine apart. Uh, now my one, as I said, 2003 model. I've got the 14 magnets there um, and mine is a 60 series. One of the ways you can tell is you're not going to go measuring the wire, but the 80 and 100 series have got really neat windings, and these, how look, seriously though, they look like they're sort of done by hand almost. They ain't perfectly machined uniform. Look, there's some sort of overlapping and stuff. That's another indication to use a 60 series. Now there's one model that's newer than mine, uh, and while the ends of these are sort of flat-ish, they're what you call your eddy plates. While they're flattish, um, the new model has like really smooth around ones. And apparently with these flat ones, you've got to decog them. Um, now, I think that might mean it's a bit of a smoother turn for the thing over, but I'm not too much up on that. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description to tell what type you got. And there's more on that uh, links to the, the backshed.com, uh, the particular one which the page which explains what type you got um, and they talk about decogging there and I think you may need to decog that or it's just more recommended to decog it for smoother operation. I'm not really sure at all uh, about decogging and what it is because I haven't quite read that part on the website yet. Um, I should go turn my computer off thinking of that. Um, but yeah, there's uh, various different ones. Um, and you know mine's a semi new one there's one model newer but then there's two models older uh, than the one I've got here uh, mine's a 42 pole one uh, that means there's 42 your statters or whatever they call the things um, and there's 14 magnets in this uh, but each one of these blocks is supposed to be like four magnets on its own uh, and there's another one, new one they've got that's got three magnets and there's a really old school one uh, that's your full on big heavy wire 100 series that's actually stacks and stacks and stacks of individual magnets um, but you know those are getting really quite old uh, back in the 90s I think so yeah but there you go there's how you pull that to bits um, and you know basically once you get your bearings out or whatever um, you know the proper way then you've got all the bits you need and all your plastic and your bits and pieces can go in the bin and your outer casing I'll tell you what is probably good for a small dog kennel or something like that a um, little hidey spot for your chooks overnight or something like that but it's not a bad outer casing it's a darn sight stronger than most outer casings for uh, washing machines and that so so yeah there you go